So the first man steps in there and he hits the mine. So his legs blown and he's leaning there and moaning. Then K Company comes up. Same thing, the man goes up, puts his foot in there and he is blown and he's moaning. Then our turn comes. So I looked up in the heavens. I think I had divine guidance. And I said, God help me. And I started with my first foot. Years before Samuel Lombardo was born, his father, an Italian national, had a dream of relocating to the United States, finding a job, and raising a family. By 1914, he had made it to America and was well on his way to achieving his dream when fate called him back to Italy. Dad came over because his mother wrote him and said, I'm going blind. I would like to see you one more time before I go blind. So he got over there and guess what? World War I breaks out while he's there in our town. So they grabbed him and put him in the army. So he served in the Italian army. Anyhow, while he was home, he got married. And that's when the three of us were born. I was born in Calabria, southern Italy, and I saw Mussolini, and I saw what oppression was. Every week we had to get out and raise our hands when the black shirts marched through the town. One day the fascists came through, and I was standing here, and this man on my right was bent over at 90 degrees, so he must have had osteoporosis. And when the fascists came through, everybody raised their hand, but he couldn't raise it, of course. And two fascists came over, grabbed them by the neck, and took them up to the dungeon. They came through and put out an order that if you had any foreign flags, you had to report them. So we had an American flag and also a socialist flag because dad was a socialist because he was fighting fascism. So we had the two flags and my mother gave them to me. I put them under my arm and she said to hide them in the attic. So I went up there and I hid them. I came back down slowly and I stood next to my mom and she was white as a sheet. She was so trembly because we were expecting the henchmen and the mayor to come by. And finally they came. They asked her, do you have any foreign flags to report? And she had said no, but she was trembling. And at that time, I just grabbed her by the, by the skirt, and I went into a tantrum, and I yelled as loud as I could. And they had enough of me, so they all left right away. Captivated by his father's stories of the land of opportunity, Sam longed for the day he could leave Mussolini's Italy behind and start a new life in America. In 1929, at 10 years old, Sam finally got that chance. We got ordered to, to come to America, which we were waiting for. When we arrived at New York Harbor, it was all fogged in, but I wanted to see the Statue of Liberty more than anything else. So guess what? At five o'clock in the morning, I slipped out of bed and went upstairs and went up front, and finally the fog lifted and the statue showed up. You can't believe the jubilation and everybody was happy and singing. We got off and I still remember on the sidewalk, my dad got us all together and he said, remember your heritage, you'll still be proud of your heritage, you can't change that. But uh, America is our new country. I knew the black clouds of Europe, you know, Hitler was getting strong. I said to my dad and mother, I said, we're going to go to war, you watch. But I had to convince them because they didn't want me to join the guard. I said, if I join it, I'm better prepared and I'll have a better chance of living through the war over there. I wanted to go overseas to get Hitler myself. I really felt so strong. Sam joined the Pennsylvania National Guard and soon after attended officer school in Fort Benning, Georgia, graduating as a second lieutenant. But it wasn't until the autumn of 1944 that Sam would find himself heading back to Europe into combat. And guess what? We landed at Omaha Beach, but this is October. And I got assigned to the 99th Division on the line. 
Sweeping along the Rohr River and the Siegfried Line, the 99th swiftly made their way toward Germany. But in mid-December, the advance came to a halt, and the Battle of the Bulge began. They thought the war was going to be over by Christmas. Then finally, the 16th comes around, and the bombardments all start. So we held the line, and uh, we had a lot of night patrols at that time, a lot of night patrols every night. They sent a patrol over to see the front line, and every night somebody was killed. Finally, we were getting ready for the main thrust, and we started digging. And I dug and dug and dug. I went down seven feet, and my kind of commander said, what are you going so deep for? I said, you wait when the bombardment comes. You'll know why. And the bombardment started at five o'clock, and it was Armageddon. It bombed for 25 minutes. You imagine that 25 minutes, the Germans threw everything they had at us. Nebelwerfers, cannons, mortars, everything, and it was just, just, I thought it was the end of the earth. And finally, the last shell that came in hit, hit our hole. And all that dirt, that seven feet of dirt, the shell 88 or whatever it was hit there, and the whole side of the wall caved in, but the shell never came through. So then I realized, and he realized, I said, you see that extra soil we had? That saved our life or we wouldn't be here today. So I said, are you okay? He said, yes. He said, are you okay? Yes. So we shook all the soil off our heads and stood up and it was all over. For five minutes, you could hear a pin drop. And then our own artillery started and they went for 25 minutes, retaliated. Nothing happened after that. The attack never came. So we must have broken her back and uh, the Sodian and so forth. After months of combat in Europe, Sam began to miss the visage of the American flag. To him, it was a representation of his family, his home, and everything he held dear. We take it for granted. We see the American flag every day at the stations, at the federal building. I got homesick for the American flag. I really did. They're not going to send one to the foxhole. I wasn't on the chain of supply, so I couldn't get one. And that made me mad. So I said, we'll make our own flag. So you've probably seen pictures of whole towns where the streets, it's all lined with white flags. That's when the cities gave up. And here was a five, three by five, which looks just perfect for me. So I sent the sergeant down to the town, and he bought a sewing machine. He brought the sewing machine in, and the pillowcases uh, were the red, and the curtains, big, big blue curtains. And we were so lucky because you could see the colors were just exactly. So that was the beginning of our flag, and uh, from that time on. Every time we were reserved, we worked till 11 o'clock at 12 at night, and then in the morning we would jump off to the next attack. When we got to the end of the bulge, we got up to the German and Belgian border, we have to cross and, and clean these Germans from the border. That was our order. So we had to cross, L Company was first, K Company and I Company, which was my company. So the first man steps in there and he hit the mine. So his leg's blown and he's leaning there and moaning. We can still hear him. Then K Company comes up. Same thing, the man goes home, puts his foot in there and he is blown. And he's moaning. Then our turn comes. With explicit orders to advance against German positions across the field, it was now up to Sam's platoon to lead the way. The first thing that went through my mind, I'm the leader. I graduated at Fort Benny, I'm an officer, I'm the leader. I gotta do it. And I got the rest of the men all together. I told them all, follow me, but don't step out of my footprints. If I step out of mine, Sergeant Rosen will take over. 
So I looked up in the heavens. I think I had divine guidance. And I said, God help me. And I started with my first foot, crunch, crunch, crunch. Nothing happened. And the same thing, crunch, crunch, crunch. You know, I went 250 yards it was, not 10 yards or 15. 250 yards, but I'll tell you, I died with every step, every step. When I got to the end and I looked across, every man was in my footprints. It was a great sight. But we got through it. I got all 65 men. It's really, I'm lucky to be here. Three days later, when we cleared out the woods, we had to come back. The snows had melted. So I said, I got to go back and see where we cross. I want to go. So I went back and I took a GI with me, one of my soldiers, and we got down, we looked, and believe it or not, as far as I could see, there was a mine every three feet for 200 yards. I went down there and I saw the squares where they put the mine in. I wanted to see what kind of German mines there were. And I was this far from picking the grass and my soldier said, Lieutenant, let's don't stretch our luck. And I backed off and I didn't do it, I didn't do it. Three days later, the Battle of the Bulge came to an end, and the 99th Infantry continued the pursuit of German forces across Europe until May of 1945, when Germany surrendered. Before leaving Europe, the war now behind them, the 99th Infantry Division paused for a ceremony in which Sam was awarded a Bronze Star, a Silver Star, and I Company's handmade American flag. At the end, they had a formation, and they presented me with the flag because I was instrumental in making it. So when I came home, then I gave it to the Infantry Museum at Fort Benning, Georgia, which is the logical place. I gave it to them, and that's where it is today. So last year, we took 15 people up there to see it, and I thought it would be in the archives Instead of that, it was the most prominent place of the museum, the infantry entrance. So that was nice, you know. So I'm very proud we did it. And whatever little I contributed, I'm grateful that I was able to, to, to give for this great country. Hi everyone, I'm Josh from Memoirs of World War II and I just want to say thank you so much for watching this episode. Our goal is to capture as many World War II veteran stories as we can from all over the world, but we can't do it alone. If you'd like to help us in this mission, consider supporting us through Patreon and check out our website in the links below for more information. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. We want to say thank you for your support and thanks for watching.